Praise the living God. Praise the living God. We come out here to preach you the gospel, Jesus Christ. Jesus said you must be born again, my friends, my neighbors. You must be born again. What that means is a spiritual work of God comes and moves you and changes you, gives you repentance, gives you repentance unto salvation, makes you a new creation in Christ. We're here at Ohana Festival where the music glorifies darkness, wickedness, Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam says he's an atheist, but he but he mocks God in his songs. So why would an atheist mock God in his songs? He tells you to commit suicide by putting a gun in your mouth. Praise the Lord. You can be set free of sin. You see, the Bible says whoever is a slave of, of sin will not abide in the house of the Lord forever. So true born again believers will not be glorifying evil music. You would be out here street preaching that you guys were on the wide path leading to destruction. We're giving you the words of Jesus, giving you the scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. Right now, you're not wise unto salvation. Maybe you're a believer. Maybe you're going to church, but yet you're still glorifying in the world. You're still in idolatry. You're still in things that say that the Bible says will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, Jesus sends us out to preach in Mark 16, 15. Preach to every creature that you must repent and be born again in the spirit of God. You must be godly convicted. You see, the Holy Spirit, it says in the Bible, convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. See, right now you have no conviction on your soul. You have no conviction on your soul because you're still glorying in the things of Satan. You see, Eddie Vedder, he says that he's an atheist, but he mocks God. His song, Lightning Bolt, talks about uh, a seed being sown. And, and you know what's interesting? Jesus is the seed, the incorruptible seed, the word of God that's sown into the entire world. You see, you see, you have to choose this day who you will serve. Will you serve Jesus? Will you serve Jesus, be a slave of God by faith in Jesus Christ, obeying him? Repenting means turning from sin and faith unto God, faith in holiness. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You see, you've got to be converted from Satan's kingdom into God's kingdom by repenting and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible talks about the, the believing demons. He says, you believe there's one God. Oh, foolish man, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. You show me faith and I'll show you works. So we come out here to uh, exhort you guys to turn from sin. Maybe there's many professing Christians who still listen to the wicked music of the world. And you don't really know the lyrics or glorifying the devil. But the, the song Lightning Bolt, it is... It is glorifying sin. You see, he, Eddie Vedder, he says he's an atheist, but he tells you to quench your inner voice. He tells you to sin. He tells you in some of his lyrics that there is no mighty God. Why would an atheist mock God in many of his songs? Because he's really a Satanist. See, there is no atheism. You're either uh, following God through Jesus Christ or you're following Satan. And we come out here that you might see, that you might have eyes to see who you're serving. You see, many of the shirts, many of the shirts are going to have demons on them. You see, Stone Brewery has demons, demon horns. Many of the uh, music is demonic with, with lyrics that glorify serving Satan. The, the lightning bolt song talks about a woman sowing seed and weeds growing. And, and the weeds are tares, my friend. Jesus Christ said that the, that the children of the light grow together with the tares, the weeds. And at the end of the age, the Son of Man is going to send out his holy angels to reap out of his kingdom all who offend and practice sin. See, you're either serving God or serving the devil. It's that simple. My friends, in, in, in Acts chapter 17, the Bible says, Paul the apostle says, God commands all men everywhere to repent. Because there's a day that's appointed in which God is going to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, Jesus Christ. And he's given assurance by raising him from the dead. You see, you can't be an atheist. It's 2024 after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Peter 1 says he is incorruptible seed. 
You see, you must be born again of, of incorruptible seed, Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus said, whoever committeth sin is a slave of sin. So many of you go to concert after concert. You do your idolatry. As soon as football comes, some of you it's soccer. Some of you it's concerts. Whatever it is, you're trying to get fed by this world's lust. You see, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is Jesus Christ. You can have eternal life, but you must believe and follow Jesus. You can't just say, I believe in Jesus, go to church once a week, and then go to these wicked concerts that glorify getting drunk. You see, the Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. If you are not convicted over sin, then you are not following Jesus. See, the Bible says that what fellowship, what fellowship has Christ with demons? You see, we see people with crosses coming in here. We see people that say they're believers. And, but you guess what? The Bible says there's no fellowship, no fellowship with Christ and demons. The Bible goes on to say there's no fellowship with light and darkness. What communion it has light with darkness? What fellowship has a believer with an unbeliever? Praise the living God. Praise the living God. You must be born again. You must be born again of the Spirit. It's not by the will of man. Catholicism baptizes you as a baby. They do the signs of the cross. They come to these wicked concerts. And it's not just Catholicism. It's many of the churches in the last days called the great falling away. This is the age we're in. We're here to let you know the truth that you must repent and turn from sin. Be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Be a new creation in Christ. The old things are supposed to die to you. All the wicked music. Cast out the darkness from you. Cast out the wicked music. The pills aren't working. The, the drunkenness isn't working. Jesus died for you. That you would live for him. Right now you look depressed. We can see spiritual forces surrounding many people who are older. And they're dark. And we can tell that you have no joy. No joy, no hope. It's just death following you. One concert after another, you're not being filled up with any joy. It, it, the, the joy runs out. You get to go, yay, yay, yay. Watch football, watch, and you scream and party, and you gamble, and you come to concerts, and your next vacation, but it's all nothing. It's all fading away, like the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endureth forever. You are fading away. You are passing away. The Bible says that your life is as a vapor, here today, gone tomorrow. What are you storing up treasure in? You're trying to fill up from this world's cup, the cup of iniquity. You're trying to fill up offspring, offspring of the devil. You need to be born again in the spirit of God. You see, most of these concerts are literally making a pact with the devil. That's why you see them mocking God like Eddie Vedder in many of his songs. Pearl Jam. It sounds really innocent, right? But if you're born again and you go look at those lyrics, you can see that he's mocking God. He mocks God. He says there is no God. He straight up says it. There is, there's wickedness being sown into you. You're meditating on a cup of devils. Be born again in the spirit of God. Turn from sin, my friend. Re okay, repent. Don't be, fought, don't be going in there. Don't go into the wide path, my friend. He glorifies the devil. Pearl Jam glorifies the devil, my friend. Yes, yes. The Bible says that it's a wide path that leadeth to destruction and many go there with. You see, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus Christ, he was a hellfire preacher. Warning of hell 42 times that you would not be deceived, my friends. Jesus said, narrow is the way and difficult and straight is the gate and few there be that go there. But broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go there with. You see... You're, you're, you're walking dead men, Pearl Jam. Come on, you guys. Jesus died for you. The Bible says he died for all that we would no longer walk and live for ourselves, but him who died for us. See, when you're wearing shirts glorifying men and, and you're in idolatry, we can see that you look like you're dead men walking. You're just, you're just, you're, you're, your heart is uncircumcised. Your neck is, your neck is stiff. Some gnash their teeth. They get mad at the preaching, but good. 
good that you get mad. See, Jesus said, I wish you were hot or cold, but because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see, Jesus can work with your anger. That's why I like it when people actually get pricked to the heart and they get convicted. And maybe that word will get sown that right now you're on the wide path leading to destruction. Why would you bring little kids here, my friend? You must be born again. Where are you going when you die? Where are you going when you die? The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Eddie Vedder claims to be an atheist, but he's telling you to stick a shotgun in your mouth. He's telling you there is no mighty God. He's telling you to quench that inner voice and to go on and sin. And many other songs. Why does he do that if he's an atheist? Because his daddy is the devil. You see, Jesus Christ, he street preached. And in John 8, he said, why do you not understand my speech? Why are you not able to listen to my word? It's because you're of your father, the devil. You see, the lust thereof, he did. He was a murderer from the beginning. The truth abode not in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie according to his own resources. You see, so you're bringing children into a, a den of deeds. What, is there not drunkenness here? Is there not many people on drugs here? I used to, I used to be a, a fake believer. I was going to these concerts. I was using drugs, you see, and I'd read that Holy Bible and I would see the parables and I knew I wasn't following Jesus. Yes, I believe that Jesus was the son of God raised on the third day. Praise God. I would never, ever mock him. And I was just dead still in my sins, you see, but I'd read that Bible and I was honest that I wasn't truly following him, you see, and many of the churchgoers today are not, there's no distinction from the world and a born again believer. You must be born again. There's going to be a distinction. You see, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. This is a cup of demons. This is profane. This literally mocks God. When my wife preaches, she's going to tell you about uh, some young, a young band here that mocks Jesus, even has the name of Jesus. You see, Jesus said many are going to say on that day, Lord, Lord, and they're not going to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus says, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, shall enter the kingdom of God. Okay, you got to do the will of the Father. The will of the Father is to believe in the Son, Jesus Christ. The death, burial, resurrection. That he is born again. That he is lifted high. Sitting on, on, on the throne of God. Everything is his footstool. And, and the devil and his angels, they're going to be cast into the, into the lake of fire. But sadly, many are following the devil and the angels. Literally glorifying the devil in your lifestyle. You see, Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, where is your heart at? Wherever your treasure is, there your heart is. Right now, your treasure is in Pearl Jam. It's in the next concert. And, and, and your pills aren't working. Your smoke, your weed, all of your pharmacy, it's not fixing you, is it? You're still dead in your sins. You know what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2? It says that we were all once dead in our trespasses and sins until Christ made us alive. See, you've got to be made alive in Christ. You've got to be made alive, no longer dead in your trespasses and sins. You see, if you're still dead in your trespasses and sins, then you're not alive in Christ. You see? And then it says, by grace are ye saved, not of works, not of yourself, lest any man should boast. And many people are saying that you're already saved walking into concerts like this. My friends, you are not saved walking into concerts like this. Maybe God's working on you and you need the harder word of God telling you that Jesus said it's narrow and it's difficult and you must deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. If you're not doing that, you're still following the world. You're still partying in debaucheries, revelries. You're still walking with unbelievers. You might say you believe in Jesus. You might go to church, but you're right next to people that mock God. You're partying with them. You're drinking with them. You're smoking with them. You're not telling them that you must repent, that you're on the white path. Why is that, preacher man? Because you're not following Jesus. It's true that you're not following Jesus. Jesus said whoever's ashamed of him and his words, he will be ashamed of them when he returns in the glory of the holy angels. You see, the trouble is, is you're ashamed of Jesus. You go to church and the pastor feeds you with some false stuff in your ear that you're saved if, as long as you believe, but that there's, but your belief is no works. Your works are, are coming to these concerts. Your works are that you meditate on wicked music and drunkenness and no fear of God. You see what the Bible says? Jesus says, do not fear man. Do not fear man who could kill body and that is it. I tell you to fear. Fear God who could kill body, then throw soul into hell. That is who you should fear. So a true believer will, will be convicted by the word of God. He, 
they will no longer be able to go on as they used to in sin. They won't be able to. Because why? Because the seed of Christ is in them. The Bible says, whoever's born of God cannot commit sin because the seed of Christ is in them. You cannot water the seed of Christ with wicked music. That's, that's filth. That's filth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, this is a, a verse very applicable to the lukewarm church, to the professing believers who, are, who hate the street preaching, the professing believers who still party like the, rock, like the world, who still, I mean, there's very little difference between professing believers and, and the world. Yes, very little difference. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, what fellowship has Christ with Belial demons? What fellowship has light with darkness? What fellowship has a believer with an unbeliever? Then it specifically says, Come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. The unclean thing is the wicked music that you're pouring in. You're listening to it with revelers and unbelievers, and you claim to be a believer, you see? But Jesus said that many are going to claim his name in the last days. And here, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, you're still workers of iniquity. You love the world. You see, the Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever wants to make himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? He says, let your laughter be turned to mourning. Let your joy be turned to gloom. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he may lift, he will lift you up in due time. But you cannot act like you're saved walking into wicked concerts. You can't act like you're a follower of Jesus and be uh, dependent on all your pills, still drinking, still getting drunk, uh, hating the real word of God preached that there's a judgment coming. My friends, the Bible says this. The Bible says evil men understand not judgment. Evil men understand not judgment. The Bible also says that those who hate God love death. You see, most of the shirts are, are glorifying death, demons, drunkenness. It's, it's this world, you see? See, what Jesus said in Matthew 7 should put fear in every believer that's still living worldly. Many are going to claim his name that, hey, I had a big church building. I, there were so many baptisms. But what happened? They, they started folding like a lawn chair. These are the last days, my friends, where evil is called good and good is called evil. Isaiah 520. That is what brings reprobation. When you start calling God's way evil and the way of the world good, it means God's giving you over to a debased mind. He's letting you have what you put your treasure in. You see, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. He says, make the tree good. Make it good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. You see, so if you're meditating on wicked music and drugs and just partying and you're, you're making your tree evil, you're, they, they literally say, we're deadheads. We're grateful dead. You're literally saying you're grateful that you're dead. You've got like Judas Priest. It's literally satanic. My friends, I used to listen to that stuff. And I know how satanic it is. And this, this is not much different, especially Eddie Vedder. Because a lot of people think, oh, he's an atheist. He's, he's, he's cool with whatever you believe. But why does he mock God? Because he's a satanist. My friends, he's made a pact with the devil. My friends, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's literally making it seem good to put a shotgun in your mouth. How would you bring kids to that? Do you? Because you have no light in your eyes. You've set your eyes on things of the world and darkness rule and reign with Christ. You got to be separated from the world, my friend. You got to come out from among the world. You got to read your Bible. No, you can't love Jesus and rock and roll. You can't, my friends. You're a double-minded man, unstable. How many people are with you using drugs? How many people are with you? Have you heard the lyrics? You're deceived, my friend. We're here for you. We're here for you. Here's what Jesus said. Every tree that beareth not good fruit is hewn down and thrown in the fire. Matthew 7, 19. Your tree is corrupted. You're putting corruptible, profane music in your heart. You're meditating on ungodly things, even things that talk about suicide. You cannot serve two masters. We're here to call you to repentance. The false Christianity manifests itself. He's got a Christian shirt on saying he loves Jesus and rock and roll. My friends, that's like saying that you love uh, the devil and love Jesus. You cannot. 
The Bible says that fear God and hate evil. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To fear God is knowledge. Fear God to depart from evil. And knowledge of the Holy One is to turn away from evil. Right now you're on the wicked path. You're on the broad path that's leading to destruction. Matthew 7, little one. Matthew 7, you cannot be a worker of iniquity. Workers of iniquity. You see? See, you're not bringing anybody to Christ by saying you love Jesus and rock and roll. No, no, you're, you're actually bringing in a false belief. You're letting people think that they can keep the world in them and keep idolatry and keep drug use and keep wickedness and you're not winning anybody out of the darkness. You're not winning anybody out of the darkness. No, you're misrepresenting Jesus Christ. Truly, my friends, if you have ears to hear, you will hear what the Spirit of the Lord saith unto His people. That's what the Bible says. Resist not the Word of God. Don't resist it, you see? We're actually here for professing Christians. For, we're here to glorify God by preaching. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to we who are being saved are saved. It's the power of God. You see, by foolishness, God uses the preaching. He uses the base things to confound the wise. So we're bringing him glory that there's power in the name of Jesus. Resurrection power. I used to be a slave of drugs and this wicked music. I used to sell drugs, but I'd read that Bible and say, I'm not following you, Jesus. And this scripture right here got me. Matthew 13, where Jesus is the seed sown out into the whole world. You see? And some people reject it. Like this guy, Eddie Vedder, says he's an atheist. So he'd be one that rejects it. But his lyrics mock God. So he's a Satanist. You see, that's what it comes down to. But one hearer rejects it. But the second hearer receives the kingdom preached, the word of God, that you must repent and be born again. And he receives it. He says, yes, Jesus rose again from the grave. I believe it. I go to church. But as soon as tribulation and persecution come for Jesus, the word, many become offended. They, they, they don't want to actually be a slave of God. They don't want to be persecuted for following Jesus. So they're false believers. They, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power they're in from such turn away. Second Timothy chapter three. And Jesus goes on to say the next year receives the word, makes it further. But the cares of the world, your love of this stuff the, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke it out. No fruit. What happens, preacher man, if you're a believer, but you're bearing wicked fruit? Well, Jesus said it in John 15. Every branch that beareth no good fruit is hewn down, thrown in the fire in Matthew 15, 6. You see this message? It's actually turned from sin. Follow Jesus. Obey him. Do the will of God. The will of God is to go into church. Man, why would you go to church and then have offspring and go to wicked music? You see, thank you for manifesting how weak these churches are. Your church is doing nothing for you. It's not bringing conviction upon your life. Your family's perishing. You're on your way to the flames. And you have no power to turn from sin. There's no power in you guys. You see, you're, because why? You're pouring in Satan. You're pouring in wickedness. You're standing with the revelers. You see? And that's what Jesus said, that many are going to claim his name. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? In Luke 14, 6. Jesus said in Matthew 13 that there's only one hearer out of four who hears and understands and has fruit 160 and 30 fold. You see? So that fits with the narrow path. You've got to go down the narrow path, my friends. You're on the broad path. It's broadly going here to revel. Your concerts are not filling you up. Your drinks are not filling you up. You're still depressed. Now you're taking pills for your depression. Your wife is taking pills. You guys are stuck with the TV and football and the next concert and the next travel and it's not filling you up. You have not denied yourself and followed Jesus. My friend, a judgment's coming. A righteous judgment. A righteous judgment. You got like a little demon on the back of your shirt glorifying demons, darkness, there's a judgment coming. You see, a judgment's coming, a righteous judgment. Jesus is coming back to, to, with a sword in his mouth, my friends. Follow the biblical Jesus and you will not follow Satan. You will not go on the wide path that leadeth to destruction. See, we're trying to reach you where you're at. We can see depression. We can see that the concerts aren't filling you up. You, mockers and scoffers will come in the last days, living according to their lust. 
I, look, look, lady, I care for you. You look depressed. Jesus will set you free. He'll give you joy. I care for you. God's reaching out his arm, trying to extend it to you to say that there is hope and power in the name of Jesus. Those pills are not working for you. This concert's not working. Admit it, you're depressed when you get home. You think of death, you think of suicide, that there is no hope for you. And you keep filling up on this cup that leadeth to your destruction, that leadeth to the hell fire. And we're trying to wake you up. The Bible says, wake to righteousness and sin not. You see, my friends, Jesus said that many are going to claim his name all through the parables. You see, and so many in these churches are going to these concerts. You're still bound by your emotions, Paul says. You judge by the outward instead of the inward man. You see, Jesus said your, your heart is where your treasure is. See, make the tree good and its fruit good. That means that you are on a vine. You're either on the vine of Christ, you're either following Jesus, and you're going to bear fruit, fruit of holiness, fruit of repentance. Uh, you're going to repent, be born again. You're going to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're going to understand that you're supposed to be calling people into God's kingdom. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, I said, go ye out into all the world and preach the gospel. He who believes and repents shall be saved. He who does not will be damned, condemned. And these signs shall follow believers. They will heal the sick, cast out devils, speak in new tongues. See, signs will follow you. The cup of joy will be your strength. You will no longer fill up on this uh, on this wickedness, on this this cup of demons that we're telling you Christ has no fellowship with it. More scriptures for you. First John chapter one says, behold, what manner of love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. And everybody who has this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure, you see? And then this is the message that we have heard and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we say we know God and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sins, iniquities, and we have fellowship one with another. See, right now you're going into church, but the pastor's not convicting you. You're not out here street preaching. You have no fear of God. You don't understand judgment, and you're still walking with the wicked. The Bible says, though they join hand in hand, they will not go unpunished. You see, you cannot walk in darkness and claim Jesus. You've got to come out of darkness into the glorious light. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Good point. So brightness is Jesus. Darkness is this path. Darkness is glorifying wickedness, drunkenness, pills, suicidal thoughts, uh, meditating on this world's lust. You see, that's darkness. First John chapter 2 says, anybody who says they know him, Jesus Christ, and does not obey him is a liar and the truth is not in him. So obeying Jesus is that narrow path. It's difficult. It's going down the narrow path. It's forsaking all that you have everything throw it out throw your wicked music out your weed your pills your psychology throw it out and come to the lord jesus come unto him as the living stone and he will lift you up cry out to him while he is near let the wicked man forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts you see man we hear it again that he's a believer he's been baptized well let's get that out of the way right now romans 6 talks about baptism Shall we go on in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we who have died to sin live any longer therein? And he goes on to say, don't you know whoever you submit yourselves to? That is who you're a slave of? Right now you're submitting yourselves to Pearl Jam. Look at all the Pearl Jam. You're submitting yourselves to the next concert, to the next high. You're submitting your ears to wicked music. You're submitting your eyes to wickedness. Your, your drinks, your drinks, you're submitting your hand. You see, submit to Jesus. You see, the Bible says, as we used to do this, we used to submit ourselves to sin. And now we're ashamed of the things we did. My friends, I was violent. I was a drug dealer. I listened to this wicked music. I'm ashamed of that. Like, I understand what God has done for me. He's poured out a spirit. Now I have to choose this day who I will serve. See, right now you're still serving Satan. You're still submitting everything to Satan. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Be sober-minded. Be sober-minded, my friends. 
The devil prowls around looking for whom he may devour. You see, when you're not sober, you're going to your next concert. You're drinking, you're, you're partying, you see, and you're, you're submitted unto the devil. But the Bible says in Romans 6, don't you know whoever's been baptized with Jesus Christ has been baptized into his death and resurrected in newness of life? The Bible says, let everyone who name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You see, you're not departing. You're partnering with iniquity. You're, you're drinking the cup of devils. My friend, Jesus died for you. He died for you. You can come out of suicidal thoughts. Look at the demons tattooed on you. Gosh, why do you glory in demons? Man, we feel for you, man, because you're on the wide path. We, we love you as Christ loved us to tell you, my friends, there's a better way. There's a better way than going this way. And it's Jesus Christ. See, these tracks, they show you, they show you what it looks like for the crucifixion. It's astrotheology. It's astrotheology. Right, wide path. See, now anybody professing Christ and seeing the wide path, seeing people do Satanist signs, seeing the devilish stuff. See, if you're truly following Jesus, you love these people to tell them, look, you're on the wide path. Look, Jesus said, many are going to claim his name and here depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And Jesus said this, the wise man is the one who hears Jesus and does it. He is likened unto a man who built his house upon that rock. And when the storm came and the wind blew and the waves crashed, it stayed because it was founded upon the rock. But the foolish man is the one who hears and does not do. He keeps going to the wicked concerts. He has no fear of God. He has no understanding of judgment. And he keeps, and he hears the word. He goes to church, but there's no change. There's no change at all. There's still darkness. There's still depression. There's still slavery of sin. Don't bring your kids here. Bring your kids up in righteousness. This place is wicked. Wickedness, you guys. You, you might say, oh, it's not wicked. It is. It is. Just look at the shirts. Just listen to the lyrics. Look around at the people getting drunk. Look around at how dark people are. And the love of Christ is to tell them, repent and be converted. You've got to turn from sin and be born again in the Spirit of God. He will give you newness of life. He will give you a new heart. He will give you joy, my friend. Is there not? There's light for you. You don't have to keep stumbling in darkness. See, they glory. They glory in their shame. Glory in your shame. We love you enough to tell you that Jesus can set you free. But if you're not going to listen and hear, God gives you over to your strong delusion. You're going to be given over as a slave of sin. And you're going to end up being cast into hellfire. You see, God is not like us. God has done things his way. And we must obey him. You see, the devil and his angels are leading you to hell. Leading you to hell. No fear of God, you want to preach? Pure. We come to you in weakness and fear and trembling, submitted under the mighty hand of God as vessels of mercy fitted for honor. We come to you determining not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You are currently reveling in the wickedness of your flesh and what has been made manifest in front of us is that you are walking dead. We can see the death on you. We can see the wicked spirits on you ushering your soul to hell. There's only one way. There's only one to escape eternal damnation and help our devouring your everlasting soul. Jesus Christ came to make you new. He came so that you could learn the ways that are higher than ours. You are currently reveling in drunkenness, debauchery, wickedness, filthiness, maliciousness, fornication, idolatries. You continue in your blasphemies and you say you're not hurting anyone, but you are essentially committing suicide. And this has manifested within your mind by how utterly depressed you are. Jesus Christ came to fill that hole inside you. Your fornications are not working. Your medications are not working. Your wicked music is not working. Nothing will work. You will never be satisfied in this world.
conscience. You are born with the conviction that God does exist, but you suppress the truth in unrighteousness, being filled with your filthiness instead. So many people walk by us and claim they are Christians. You are not a Christian if you are reveling with demons. You are not a Christian if you praise, if you praise Satan instead. Do not claim Christ and come to fellowship with demons. You look dead. You are walking dead. You are walking dead. Children should not be here. You are snuffing out the light inside of him, pretending to be protecting him. You are wicked. Children should not be here. You are tarnishing their mind, and you will be judged for tarnishing what is innocent in the sight of God. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and he also knows how to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly, the Bible says, more specifically, those who walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness, those who despise government and order. Presumptuous are they self-willed, making yourself your own God. Self-willed and not afraid to speak evil of dignities. The Bible says a man with honor who lacks understanding is as a brute beast who perishes. And these as brute beasts speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. The Bible says when Jesus Christ comes back because he has called out to you so many times and you have refused him. The Bible says when he comes back, you will call out to him then and he will not hear you. You will eat of the fruit of your own ways and be filled with your own devices. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever, nice cross, nice cross. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man has sown, that he will reap. If you have sown into the flesh, you will have the flesh reap corruption. If you have sown in, you're the one with demonic spirits on you. I just want you to be peace. Hey, Christ and the devil does not have fellowship. That's right? true. You're on your way to eternal damnation and hell far devouring your everlasting soul. If you have sown into the spirit, you will have the spirit reap life everlasting. How long will you simple ones love your simplicity? How long will the scorners delight in their scorning? How long will the fools hate knowledge? Turn you at his reproof so he can pour his spirit out on you and make his words known unto you. Jesus Christ came to give you a way out. Jesus Christ came to show you the truth of your fallen state. He loves you and you mock him. Against who do you sport yourselves? Against who do you make wide your mouth and stick out your tongue? You are of a corrupted seed and Jesus Christ came that you could be made.
Jesus Christ has called out to you so many times. He is calling out to you now. He has shown his servants the reality of the spiritual state you are in. We see you fallen by the wayside. He came to make you free. Jesus Christ came so that you could be made new. You, are, you do no longer have to be bound in chains. You think you are free, but the Bible says you are a slave. You literally look dead. You don't have to be dead anymore because you hated knowledge and you did not choose the fear of the Lord. You said in nothing all of his counsel. You despised his reproof. So when he returns, you will cry out to him then and he will mock you as you mock him now. He's given you mercy. He's calling out to you now. Even though he knows who is his, he's still, still giving you space to repent. And you instead choose to perish. What if God, willing to make his power known, these children should not be here. You will be judged for these souls laid in your charge. How wicked do you have to be to usher your children into hell with you? Jesus Christ came so that you could be made free. You're literally bound in chains now. Where are you going when you die? You're not getting any younger. Where are you going when you die? You could die tonight. These places are so wicked. Demons make sacrifice every single day. You could die tonight. How many shootings happen in place like this one? And you bring your children with you. I'm confused. You're the one who looks like a woman, but you're a man. You're around people with demons on their clothes, and we're confused. I know where my role is. Jesus Christ said many would confess to know him. But in heart and deed, they deny him being abominable and unto every good work reprobate. These places have shootings all the time and you're bringing children here to be ushered into hell with you. How wicked do you have to be to taint the minds of those who are pure? Oh, I am on a swim, Look at the clothes that have demons on it. Shouldn't it be easy to see? The older you get, the wise, wise unto salvation. Jesus Christ came to show you the truth of your fallen state. You believe you are free, but that's because there is a God of this world who has blinded your eyes. And you don't understand you are a slave. This music is so wicked. There's a band called Teen Jesus in the Gene Teasers. And all they do is sing about debauchery, lustfulness, lesbianism, wickedness, drunkenness, fornications. And they claim the name of Christ. They say Teen Jesus on them because they are mocking a perfect holy God. You could repent. The Bible says that the understanding for the invisible things of the world, the creation, are clearly seen and understood by the things which are made, so that you are without excuse. This understanding has been manifested within you, and God has shown it unto you. 
You cannot claim ignorance on Judgment Day. Jesus Christ is coming back with fire in his eyes. He's coming back to make war with all the ungodly who blaspheme his name. And every eye will see him. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Bible says, through the foolishness of preaching, it pleased God to save those who believe. And in this end times, in these two times, he has manifested his word in power and in glory through the vessels of mercy submitted unto him. You can be made new. You can be made new. But your sin is too pleasurable. You've tried everything else. How old are you? Where are you going when, you're, when you die? You're getting old. Repent. Eddie Vedder mocks God. So does most of the music industry. You need to be out here preaching if you say you believe. Jesus Christ came so that the lepers would be healed, so the dead would be raised, and so the blind would be given their sight. You are literally walking dead. Children should not be here. How wicked. You're raising your children up to become whores. They're girls. What are you doing? How wicked do you have to be? To take the minds of those who are pure. Hey, Jesus died for you. No, he didn't. It's my sleep. You will die one day. How are you going to cheat death? How are you going to flatter with your mouth before the throne of God? Watch God, you devil. Stop spreading devils. Come for devil. Yeah, it's the truth. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man has sown, that he will reap. If you have sown into the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. When you speak evil of the things that you understand not, you will utterly perish in your own corruption. And the Bible says you are as a brute beast. You are as a brute beast, just gluttonously feeding the lusts of your flesh. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Walking honestly, not in the day, not as in the night, in drunkenness, chamberness, wantonness, strife, and beings. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision to the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So happy. It doesn't look like it. I see darkness on you. I see. I see in the spirit you are walking dead. You are walking dead. You are being led as sheep to a slaughter. Jesus Christ came is the extended hand of the mercy of God and you blaspheme his name. God. Jesus died for you that you can be born again. The Bible says, so you don't understand when you start scoffing and mocking, manifesting in front of the light of Christ. You don't realize you're walking in step with biblical prophecy. You fulfill prophecy. As you hate what dwells within us, as you hate the word of God being spoken, you don't understand the Bible has spoken about you and your kind. And all you do is prove that our faith is truly rooted in the truth. Turn or burn. Turn or burn. Except ye repent, you shall likewise perish. The 
The only reason you hate the word of God being spoken is because it goes directly against every lustful, wicked desire you have. You are literally walking dead. I can see in the spirit, I can see that you are walking dead. You don't have to be miserable anymore. You don't have to be drowning in this wickedness. Take off the shirt unless you're going to actually follow Jesus. Jesus Christ came to set you free. We can see into the spirit. We can see the chains you are bound in. And you think you have free will. But the Bible says you are a slave. There's only one way to break the chains that bind you. There's only one way to be given your sight. There's only one way to escape eternal damnation and hell for devouring your everlasting soul. We are not out here for no reason. As fools among you, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only a fool would say there is no God. The Bible says only a fool does not fear God. Especially when you get that old and you still say there is no God. You are supposed to be growing in wisdom and understanding. Not being backslidden into a whorish state wanting to burn in hell. You are the temple of God. How be it the most high does not dwell in temples made by the hands of man. Thus saith the prophet. Jesus Christ came. Woe unto those who call good evil and evil good, who put light for darkness and darkness for light. A crooked thing cannot be made straight, and you are stuck and hardened in your crooked ways. Ye step necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. Jesus Christ came to show you the ways that are higher than ours. Jesus Christ came because he loves you. Why would you bring children? Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. Jesus Christ came to give you life. Look at you, you're darkened. You're darkened. You look dead. How are we spewing hate? It's the word of it's the word of God. I see so many people who are in darkness, depression, no hope. Stiff neck, dead, walking dead. Zombies, zombies, a slave of your pills, slave of your concerts. Just no holy, no holiness there. Just dead, wake, awake from the dead. Jesus can make you free. Jesus can set you free. Jesus said he is the light of the world. Whoever follows him will not walk in darkness. Come out of the darkness, come into the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this age, Satan, whom you follow and love, a lot of you say you serve Satan, hail Satan, the God of this age has blinded your eyes, has blinded you, and you, we see how dark, how dead you are, you're walking dead, you're under the power of Satan, the Bible says, open their eyes from darkness to light, Jesus Christ, turn them from the power of Satan, to the power of God. You must go through Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You're on you're on the wide path that leads to hellfire. Jesus said if your eye causes you to sin, cast it from you. My friends, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Right now your eye is on darkness. Your hand pushed the button to go to another concert. 
and your feet are walking you to death. And, and Jesus said, any that believe in me, if anybody lead them to sin, they're going to have a millstone around their neck, tossed into the depths of the sea, taking your kids to wickedness, training them up in homosexuality, wicked music, the God of this age, atheists who mock God like Eddie Vedder. You guys are on the wide path. You need the sharp word of God to penetrate the darkness, to penetrate this, this spiritual death covering all of you. There's very little light in anybody I've seen pass by. Depression, darkness, suicidal thoughts. But Jesus can help you, my friend. Jesus can set you free. Look upon what Jesus did. Do you not see that you're like dead men walking? The power of God manifests over his Holy Ghost preachers and everything is subdued and it's made manifest by the light. And this is why we're out here, that you might hear the word of the Lord and hear that I am dead. I am walking in suicidal thoughts. I can't stop my pill addiction. I have no hope. You guys are already depressed going to your concert. It, three days of partying and reveling. First Peter chapter 4 says, As Christ suffered for us, so we, the believers, must arm our mind with the same mind as Christ. He who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sins, that he would no longer go on as he used to, in the lust in which we used to do, the banquetings, the revelries, the parties, the idol abominable idolatries, the orgies, the drunkenness. That's this path. That's your big football parties. It's all idolatry. You're with revelers, drunkenness. Your God is the God of this world, Satan, who Jesus came to destroy the works of. But right now you're a servant of him. You're a follower of him. Many people have said that they're following Satan, that they like that he mocks God. You see, you see, out of your mind, the heart, the mouth speaks. Your tree is evil. Your, your vine is corrupt. You're dead men walking. You have no light, but Jesus wants you to come into the light. God has sent Jesus to die for you. That, and, he, and, and he died a torturous death. And that doesn't even move you. It doesn't even move your conscience at all. It's 2024 after the death, burial, and resurrection. Most people, even uh, unbelievers, can see we're in the last days. The news is talking about apocalyptic uh, uh, things that are happening. God is shaking this world, giving you a chance for you guys to see and hear the word of God that will snatch you out of the fire. The book of Jude says that many, that you must contend for the faith because certain men have crept in unaware, taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness. And that's most of your church buildings that are not impacting the land whatsoever. You guys are just helping the dead walk into the path of hell. You're walking hand in hand with him, going to these ungodly concerts. And what does Jude say? He says that their condemnation awaits them, these false teachers who abuse grace. You guys, the many people that are in these lukewarm churches say, what about love and grace? What about love and grace? Here's what grace teaches us. Titus 2, the grace of God hath appeared to all men. The whole world knows the grace of God. You've been given so many chances. God has already tried to save you so many times. You've had so many chances. And that's what the grace of God has shown you. That there is a power and there is a judgment coming. And the grace of God has appeared to all men. Teaching us. What does grace teach us? To deny this ungodliness. To deny worldly lust. To live soberly. How many people are sober in the line? How many people are still slaves of sin? You see? Uh, pills, drunkenness, your weed, whatever you're smoking, you're still a slave of it. You, you must be sober-minded if you're born again. It's a serious message. You see, it's a serious message. Jude goes on to say that we're snatching some out of the fire, hating even the garment stained with the sulfur. Just as God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, so he made it an example to us, to those who would live ungodly. Second Peter 2, my friends, you see... You see, Eddie better mocks God. He tells you to put a shotgun in your mouth. Hey, Jesus died for you, my friend. Where are you going when you die? Right now, you're on the broad path. Eddie better says he's an atheist, but he mocks God. He says there is no mighty God in his lyrics, but why does he say he's an atheist? He should say he's a Satanist. You see, because his lyrics show you what he believes. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and you will know them by their fruits. The good tree cannot bear bad fruit. You see, so a professing Christian, we've seen many, cannot walk hand in hand with 
somebody who mocks God and, and tells you to just keep sinning and tells you to quench the voice inside of you and you guys call us crazy trying to snatch you out of the fire there is a judgment coming a righteous judgment it's coming second Thessalonians chapter 1 that the church goes through tribulations and persecutions for preaching this word that's what the Bible says that we will go through tribulations and persecutions but the lukewarm church doesn't want to tell you that you got to repent or perish that you're on the broad path and Jesus comes back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who know not God nor obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and they're going to be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm dieth not you see if you can see in the spirit you can see yeah, are you a slave of God? Are you a slave of God or a slave of sin still? No, slave of God. Are you a slave of God? No, I'm not a, I'm a slave to God. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so you're a slave of righteousness now. Righteousness. Amen. So you got a little ministry where you're handing out tracts, doing the will of the Father. Oh, uh, we're outreaching. We're doing all sorts praise of God. See, praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes, every church where we're at. Okay, praise God. You're doing the will of the Father. That's who enters, right? Huh? That's who enters the kingdom of God. Him who does the will of the Father which is in heaven. Matthew 7. And every tree that beareth not good fruit is hewn down, cast in the fire, Matthew 7, 19. So that's why we're out here, to reach people with the word of God. They better hope that they're not chaff. They better be the wheat. Yes. Yeah. down like a wintering pan. Yes. All the wheat we gathered up into his barn, but the yes. chaff will be thrown into the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. That's the word of God. And see, there's a broad path, and there's the narrow path. And the broad path is leading to destruction, and many go there with. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you guys. God bless. Thank you. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. He is holy. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord, my friends. Jesus Christ is going to judge this world in righteousness. He is judging a righteous judgment on the church. First Peter chapter 4 says that the house of the Lord is judged first. And if scarcely a believer be saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear who obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we commit our souls to our Father in heaven, following Jesus. That's what we've committed our souls to. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How will they hear without a preacher? How will they have a preacher unless they be sent? We're sent to give you the gospel that you got to turn from sin. you got to turn from sin. This is the wide path. He's, he, this is dark. Yeah, this is dark. This path right here is to destruction. It is. So you have a little knowledge, my friend. Now read your Bible. Read your Bible and hear what hear what it says. Second Corinthians six. What fellowship has Christ with demons? What fellowship has light with darkness? What fellowship has a believer with an unbeliever? You see, the believers are preaching to the unbelievers. Repent and be born again. Test if Christ be in you, lest ye be reprobate. Second Corinthians 13. See, right now your works are following you. Your works are going into this wicked concert with many people who are claiming they're devil worshipers, wearing demons on their clothes. You see, you, you, if you have the love of Christ in you, you're going to tell people, no, 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 you've got to turn from this. You've got to repent. You're on the broad path leading to destruction. Like the man said, Christ has a winnowing fork in his hand. He's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. And the wheat are the child, children of God. And the chaff are the children of the devil. And by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are made manifest. He who does righteous is righteous even as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. And by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are made manifest. You see, your deeds are being made manifest. Your walk, your talk, your drinking, your drugging, the way you communicate, the, the music you listen to, it is, it is showing who you serve. It is showing where you're going. But Jesus wants you to serve him. See, the devil horns. Jesus came that you would follow him. He's going to give you life. He's going to give you a new heart. He's going to pour out his spirit on you. And, he, and you're going to be a new creation. The Bible says all who are in Christ are new creations. You're no longer walking dead. You're now a child of the light. You're now following the Lord Jesus in spirit and truth. You now actually understand judgment. You see, evil men, the Bible says, understand not judgment. Darkness. See, Jesus can set you free from the depression you're under. The binds, the chains that bind you. Jesus came to set the captives free. He came to give sight to the blind. The lepers were healed. The dead were raised. The Jesus Christ can set you free. You can be walking in newness of life. 
you can have the Spirit of God beareth witness with your spirit, and it must, it must, or you're not His. That's what it says in Romans. If the Spirit of Christ is in you, but if not, you are not His. You see, the Bible says there's wrath coming upon the children of disobedience, the children of the devil, the children that walk under the power, the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2. There's wrath coming, my friends. Be famous for Jesus. Repent or perish. You must be born again. Right now you're in darkness. Look at what you glory in. Jesus wants to set you free. He came to set the captives free, you guys. Right now you're glorifying Satan, the God of this age, the prince of the power of the air, the ruler of the children of disobedience. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. Come out from among them. Enter the joy of the Lord. Follow Jesus. He died for you. Don't mock him. Follow him. Come follow him. Turn from your sin. Repent and believe the gospel. You must be a born-again creature of Christ. Or you're just dead men walking to the flames. Oh, oh, my friends. My friends. The, the Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever you reap, that you will sow. Our God is not mocked. If you reap to the flesh, you will reap corruption from it. Imagine when you smoke, you, you, you plaque your teeth. You hurt your, your lungs that God gave you. When you pour in alcohol, your body starts vomiting it out. You see, when you pour in wicked music, you're, you're contaminating your, the soul that God gave you. You see, your soul will be required of you. And you know it's true. You know it. You cannot deny that death is coming. You cannot deny all the prophecies in the Bible. You can't deny it's 2024 after the death, burial, and resurrection. You've got to take this message seriously. We're here for all of you that you would turn at the rebuke of the wise, of the wise, the word of God that be made flesh, that dwelt among us. And the Bible says they beheld the glory of God, that in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh, and the word dwelt among us. And you guys didn't see the light, and you crucified the Lord Jesus. You crucified him by your sin. Come out of your sin and, and preach righteousness, preach holiness. You see? You, you're a slave right now of the devil. He's got you in chains. You're bound to, to the lust of this world. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. She says she sold her soul to Satan. Mockers and scoffers. Follow Jesus. He died for you. Look at, look at your life and look. take a serious look at it. See what you've gloried in. See the tattoos you've put on yourself. See how you're training your kid. Listen to the music you're listening to. How about the pills in your, in your purse? Think about your life. Jesus wants to set you free. I know it's reaching your heart right now. He wants to set you free. He can set you free from that so, you're, so you and your son won't flick us off. Jesus died for you that you would no longer live for yourself but for him who died for you. You see, the wide path, you're bringing your kid here, your little tattoos that are just this world stuff. How, 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 do you not outgrow this stuff? Do you not see that the things that you've worshipped and tattooed on your body, you've outgrown them? How about these shirts? How old you got to be to worship men? How old you got to be to still worship men? Worship men who mock God. Come and listen to wicked music that men that mock God. And this is what you pour your life into. You just love the darkness. But Jesus wants to pull you out. Praise God. Jesus wants to pull you out. Little ones, Jesus died for you. He, he wants to set you free from darkness. He wants you to be a slave of God. Look upon Jesus and what he did at that cross. Because a judgment is coming, my friends. Oh, you've got to take this seriously. You've got to take it seriously. They put Jesus on the cross for the words he preached. They, Eleven of the apostles went to a cross or a death for this word. It's serious. God has made his way known to man. But men love darkness rather than the light. Why is that? Because their deeds are evil. They didn't want to bring their darkness into the light lest they be reproved. But we who are brought in God do our deeds that they may be seen that they're in the light. The light of Christ. The light of the world. Men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. Revelation is a righteous judgment that Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to render each one according to his works. 
to them who did good, to the resurrection of, of the just, and to them who done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. Daniel the prophet, the dearly beloved, 700 years before Jesus, so much prophecy. He says in Daniel 12 that the wise will understand what's happening, but the wicked will keep doing wickedly, and they will not understand. And he says some are going to rise to everlasting shame and contempt, but others are going to rise and shine like the stars who lead many to righteousness. You've got to come out of darkness into righteousness by faith in the Lord. Faith, your works are going to prove your faith. Your works will prove your faith. The church is not telling you a righteous judgment, a judgment where the wheat and the chaff will be separated, where the sheep and the goats will be separated, where many who claim Jesus' name will hear, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You claim Jesus, but you work iniquity. You're unwilling to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Jesus said in John 12, 48, the same words that you reject will be the words that judge you on the last day. You know what that means? Preacher man will tell you that you've been given the word. You've been given the warning, the full counsel of God's word. You got to follow Jesus. Repent is turning from sin. Come out from among them, it says. You can't fake repentance. You can't fake it, my friend. It says godly repentance leadeth to salvation, a rending of your heart. What earnestness, what indignation has been shown to you that you've sinned against the holy God. You've mocked him. You've gone on in your sins. And, 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 and when you see that underneath the holy hand of God, it is true repentance. Repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of. But there is a worldly repentance that is just, I repent. I keep repenting. I do agree with the word of God, but I don't change. Uh, God loves you. God loves you. We bless those who curse us. We bless you with the word of God. If you flick us off, we tell you Jesus died for you. Hurry up and turn. Turn from sin. You must turn. Jesus died for you. Follow Jesus. Hare Krishna won't save you. He did not resurrect on the third day. Your drugs aren't working. The wicked concert. You see, my friends, my neighbors, you're on the broad path leading to the flame. You see, 2 Peter 2 says that God is not mocked. Listen to the judgments in 2 Peter 2. There were false prophets among them, so there shall be false teachers among you in these churches, privily bringing in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. You see, many of you go to church, and your church is not telling you that there's a righteous judgment coming, that you cannot be in the, in the world, reveling with the world, and be light. You see, Jesus said, what good is uh, salt if it loses its saltiness? It's good for nothing to be trampled under this train of uh, death. You're just being trampled. There's no power in, in your message. Your message of sin every day, there's no power. There's no resurrection power. And that's what these false teachers are telling you. You're just fine in your sins. Jesus died for you. Come out and be, be ye separate from this unclean thing. Be born again of the Spirit of God. You see, many follow the pernicious false teachers that tell you, oh, you can go to your concerts. You can, you can be like Alice Cooper and still live like a rock star. But, but my friends, you can't. You can't. Because there's no fellowship with darkness when you're a born-again believer. You're pouring in darkness when you're still reveling with the world. And you're denying the Lord that bought you, it says. Second Timothy, Second Peter chapter 2 says, if, and that their condemnation is coming on these false teachers. Darkness awaits them, outer darkness. And then it says, if God spared not the angels that sinned, the angels that sinned against God, that create most of these music lyrics that these ungodly uh, people who you worship. This is your worship. This is your form of worship. And you're worshiping the God of this age who has created this wicked music to mock God. That's what you're worshiping. And you don't even know it because you're blind. God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them into outer darkness, reserved unto the day of judgment in chains. And God spared not the old world and flooded the world of the ungodly and saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, where only eight were saved. And God judged Sodom and Gomorrah as an example to us with fire and brimstone to those who would live ungodly in their own lust afterwards.
but God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation as he re pulled righteous Lot out. But what happened to Lot's wife? Oh, what happened, preacher man? She looked back. She was stuck in the world, and she became a pillar of salt as an example to us. And the Lord Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. In the last days, Jesus said, many false Christs and false prophets will come deceiving, deceiving and being deceived. That's what's happening in these churches. There's no power to come out of your sin. There's no resurrection power to come out here and be a true son of God, preaching the words of everlasting life that you could turn. You could turn at this. You could turn away from the sin. You could turn away and you could cry out to God. And he will help you. But you got to cry out to him. You have to wail out to him, my friends, because so much darkness has filled your presence that you've got to cry out to him. You've got to wail out to the Lord and he will lift you up. But right now you're, you're hard in heart. You're, you're in pride. You think that there's no judgment coming and, and you're just living ungodly. But it's, but it's not helping you, is it? It's not. It's making you darker every day. It's making you more depressed. Do you see the people you're with uh, drinking, smoking, uh, things on their shirt that, that glorified demons? Most of the uh, uh, breweries, like Stone Brewery, they're all starting to put demons on their, on, their, on, their, on their beer. And now you glory in the shirts that have demons on it. Literally. You're literally glorying in death. The Bible says that those who hate God love death. You're glorying in death. You're glorying in your shame. And 2 Peter 2 says, those who have escaped the corruption of the world, that means a believer, now must escape the false teachers. That's what you have to do. You have to escape these churches that aren't telling you that you're supposed to be out here street preaching the power of God, warning all men everywhere to repent. A day of judgment is coming. It's at hand. It's even at the door. The, the door is about to open to judgment, my friends. Jesus died for you, friend, that you would live for him. Get serious about Jesus. Get, you got to follow him, not your devils, not your metallic. I used to listen to that wicked music. Please, my friend, we're pleading with you. This might be the last voice of the word of God before judgment. Oh, he uses us to prick your heart. Prick your heart. Harden not your heart, the Bible says. You see, you must escape false teachers in most of these churches who promise you liberty, it says, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. With their eyes, the false teachers can't cease from sins, beguiling unstable souls, making merchandise out of you. We see many false churches having wicked music and rap music and Alice Cooper and all this wickedness. They're making merchandise of you. They're not, they're not telling you that there's a judgment coming. And that's what 2 Peter 2 is warning about. And it says they forsook, false teachers forsook the right way. Oh, they built their big building. Their ministry grew big. Now they're joining the whole world. And they're becoming famous pastors. And they're no longer impacting the world. They're keeping you in your pews. Keeping you dead in your sins. But you've got to come out from among them, the Bible says. Come out from among the heathen. Come out from among the demonic. Come into the glorious light of Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Not this wicked music. You need the presence of the Lord upon your life. Praise God. See, you got to turn. You got to turn from this. Second Peter 2 says that if you're a believer... And the way of the world catches back up to you and you become entangled in these lusts and then overcome. The end is worse than the beginning for you. It'd be better for you not to know Jesus Christ, the way of righteousness, than ever after having known to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto you, church people. The holy commandment unto you, church people, is to live holy to seek God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And we're trying to tell you, neighbor, you're on the wide path that Jesus said is going to the flames, but you hear not. It says they have ears, but they cannot hear. They have eyes, but they cannot see. That's because your heart is filled up with sin, and you're not able to hear the word of God. May God have mercy upon you. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was God in the flesh. He came to dwell among you so that you might be saved. Jesus Christ came not to condemn the world because the world is condemned already. You are literally walking dead. We can see into the spirit. We see the demons on you. We see the chains on you. You can be resurrected from the death you walk in now. There's only one way to enter into the kingdom of God. You must be born again.
If your eye is light, your whole being is light. If your eye is dark, your whole being is dark. And how great is that darkness inside of you? Jesus Christ said, if your eye is light, your whole being is light. If your eye is dark, how great is that darkness inside of you? What does your eye behold? An involuntary gaze at something as remarkable is idolatry. And your idols will be brought down. you love is fading away where you put your treasure there is your heart also from the abundance of the heart your mouth speaks you are so defiled jesus christ said it is not what goes into a man that defiles him it is what proceeds forth from up his tongue that defiles a man you are in idolatry and you must be born again Howbeit the Most High does not dwell in temples made by the hands of men. You are the temple of God. And you are a liar. You're a liar. You do not serve Jesus Christ. You do not follow Jesus Christ. If you did, you would not be here. You would be here with us. Warning. Warning. We have come to warn you. God Almighty speaks through his people. And we are warning you of the judgment to come if you do not turn from your wicked ways. Every idle word will be accounted for. You don't understand. When my husband was preaching, one of the bands walked by and I seen into the spirit and I seen the demons tarnishing you. They are defiling you. And you are walking straight to your destruction. And you do it gleefully because of your foolish mind that lacks understanding. When my husband was preaching, one of the bands walked by and they glory and they revel in their fornication and the demons that they are putting on you and in of your mind. I seen what was on the band that walked by my husband when he was preaching. I seen this band walk by and you don't understand. There are spirits literally tarnishing you and you bring your children because you need to be ushered into hell. You take them with you. How wicked. How wicked. You are blinded. You are blinded by the foolish understanding of your fleshy mind. You don't see what these principalities are doing to you. For we, our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You are born with the knowledge of God. And the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, cast 
casting down every vain imagination and high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you do not come to the knowledge of the truth, Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, who was whipped and scourged and beaten, he was brutally crucified for your sins. Your thoughts have exalted you against the knowledge of God. And instead of casting down the vain imaginations, putting you on the throne where God Almighty belongs, you reject the only way to be given life and given life abundantly. Jesus Christ came to make you free. You believe you are free, but the Bible says you are a slave. Don't claim Christ and come to fellowship with demons, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask a myth to consume it on your lust. Jesus Christ came to make you new. We can see by the power of God dwelling within us, the ways manifested in the light of Christ is that you are walking dead. We can literally see the death on you, consuming inside of you. You are being ushered as sheep to a slaughter, gleefully fornicating on your way to everlasting destruction. When my husband was preaching, one of the bands walked by and I seen the evil spirits on them. You don't realize these people who are in the music industry, they know what they're doing to you. And you walk blinded, blinded by your foolish pride. You don't realize they're putting more chains on you. They're defiling you. How old are you, lady? You're about to die. Where are you going? You're so old. What are you doing? You're acting like a child. You're literally acting like a child. Mockers flicking us off. Old people flicking us off. Devil and my eight-year-old daughter is more mature than you are. How old are you? Good grief. I seen one of the bands walk by my husband preaching and the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ made it apparent unto me that these wicked musicians are poisoning your mind and they know what they are doing. Look around you. Look at the defilement. Look at what happens in places like this. Bloodshed, drunkenness, debauchery. These people are literally brute beasts. They're brute beasts just feeding themselves without fear of God. Should not be bringing children here. You think it's a joke. The Bible calls you a fool. We are talking about eternal damnation and you revel in the lusts of your flesh. You know that God exists and you know he came to walk among you. You know the invisible things of the creation have been made apparent unto you, manifested within you, even his eternal Godhead in power. You know God, but you glorify him not as God, and neither are you thankful, becoming vain in your imaginations, and your foolish hearts are darkened.
professing to be wise, you become fools and you change the image of the incorruptible God into an image made like two corruptible men. God is not what you want him to be and you are not a God. God is who he says he is. God is holy. God is just. God is right. God is noble. God is clean. God is pure. And you, oh man, you are unclean and you have sinned against a holy God. He's given you a way out of your depression, your fornications, your medications, your idolatries, your debauchery, your drunkenness. Look at you. You're walking dead and you don't even see it. Jesus Christ came. Look, I can see that you're dead inside. I can see it. I can see it. I can see that you're dead inside. And the only reason I can is because Jesus Christ has given me sight. If you would repent, if you would repent, you would be giving your sight too. And you would see the state you walk in now. Jesus Christ came so that you could be made free. You know God exists and you know he came to walk among you. For the invisible things of the creation have been made apparent unto you, manifested within you, even his eternal Godhead in power. You know God, but you glorify you thankful, becoming vain in your imagination, and your foolish hearts are darkened, professing to be wise, you become fools, and you change the image of the incorruptible God into an image made like two corruptible men. You are being herded as sheep to a slaughter. Jesus Christ came so that you could be made free. You are foolishly under the impression that you have free will, but the Bible says you are a slave. <laughs> Where are you going when you die? Have you found how to cheat death yet? I'm sure the mobs of dead people here would like to know how. Please share your wisdom with us. It's impossible. It's impossible to cheat death just as surely as you were born, bound in the chains that bind you now. You will die one day. You will die one day. And the Bible says we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive that which was done in our bodies, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We know the terror of God. So we've come to persuade you. Jesus Christ is wisdom. Crying out in the streets. Crying out for you to repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Be convicted by godly soul. Be convicted. Awake thou that sleeps and rise from the dead and Christ will give you light. The darkness you are surrounded by is all consuming and will consume 
religion. The Bible says, be not deceived. Be not deceived to the churches, he says that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicator, idolater, covetous, a homosexual, sodomite, adulterer, drunkard, reviler, extortioner. Ye will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says, but such were some of you. Not that you're continuing in it. Not that you're continuing in this lifestyle. But such were some of you. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are on the way to hell. That's, that's Satan over there. Your dad is Satan. Yeah, you have to repent and turn. Don't mock God. He's given you a chance to hear the word and turn. Be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Bible says, but such were some of you. But you are washed. But you are justified and sanctified in the spirit of our God. You see, he's telling that to the church. Be not deceived. So that means you can be deceived in these churches. You can be continuing on in this and be deceived. That's why we're out here. Most of the churches aren't telling you that you're supposed to no longer be in this line. You're supposed to be on this side saying righteousness has come in Jesus Christ and the just shall live by faith. But if anybody shrink back from faith in Jesus, God has no part. They will not enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because your faith was not in Jesus. You had a profession that wasn't true. It says with the heart one believes unto righteousness. This is not unto righteousness. This is wickedness. So many people are dead walking. We see spirits on you of suicide, depression, just darkness. Like you can't hear. Like you're mute. Like you're deaf and dumb. You're just walking to the next party and you're already depressed. You're just starting off at this concert, but you're already depressed. You see, nothing has worked for you. And that's why we're here to say you can turn. You can say, Lord, help me. I know that you're real and I know Jesus died for me. And I know that when I read my Bible, I'm not truly following you. Help me. I'm lost. I'm dead in my sins. That's what you can do. And that's what you must do when you're still walking dead at your age. That's why the younger people, they don't look dead yet. But these older people doing the signs of the devil, saying that they serve Satan, openly showing you what they what they serve and they think it's funny and you're 50 60 years old how many concerts has it been how many concerts how, how many times have you walked this path ha- hasn't brought you light jesus said you must turn and follow him deny yourself pick up your cross what, what cross you got right now you got a cross on your neck but you're walking into the servants of satan yeah why would you still use the f word you're flicking us off how old are you See how dark you are? Everything manifests under the light. Be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But you can come out from among them. You can turn and follow the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and truth. And you must. Otherwise, you're going to hear, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, God showed his provenient love for the world that he sent Jesus Christ to die a torturous death on a cross so that you could go on as a slave of sin? No, that you would follow Jesus, that you would take this seriously. Look, come on, my friend, the devil is on your shirt. Follow Jesus. He'll set you free from being a slave of this. Be a slave suicide. Is that what's on your mind? That's that, Eddie Vedder says, put a gun in your mouth. We don't want you to do that. We want you to turn to Jesus, be born again, and cry out and tell people you can be set free. You can go the narrow path. You can feel the Spirit of God bear witness with your spirit that you're a new creation in Christ. You can see prayers answered. You can see God give you utterance. You can see the power of the Holy Spirit. You know the Bible says in Acts 5.32, the Holy Spirit's given to those who obey, but do not quench the Holy Ghost with all of this revelries and drunkenness. Do not quench it, my friends. Quench it means put it out, means defile it. The Bible talks about a defiled conscience. You see, it says that some will depart from the faith. First Timothy 4, they will depart from the faith, giving heed to cities. Look at the devil on your shirt. The devil, they will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, having their conscience seared us with a hot iron. God wants to renew your conscience unto everlasting life. 
that you would have the Holy Ghost bearing witness that you're a new creation in Christ. You see, and it says that they, that their works, that, that they're defiled by their speech. It says that they speak lies and hypocrisy. How many times have you said you're going to stop drinking? You're going to you're going to do something different, but you're speaking lies because there's no power there. You're trying to do it in vain psychologies. You're trying to do it in 12 step rooms. You're trying to do it through all the philosophies of the world, but you're still dead, aren't you? You're still dead in your sins. You're still walking dead, man, because Jesus is the light. Jesus will set you free. You see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Your treasure is in corruptible things. Your treasure is in this worldly music. Corruptible things. You got the shirts. You got the plaques. You got the next Super Bowl. You got a little bit of money. You got your nice car, your house. But you're dead inside. Tell me the truth. Are you dead inside? Are, is there any joy and hope? Or does it go away when, whenever you get what you actually wanted? You see, you show up to your concert. You got to follow Jesus, my friend. Don't, don't be coming to this. Why? Because what fellowship has Christ with devils? What fellowship has light with darkness? Eddie Vedder mocks God, tells you to put a shotgun in his mouth, in your mouth. Yes. Yes. I, I wish uh, I had my friend Rick had a brain in here. So I'm just, I'm just I love you. You know, you know I was in prison. You know I was a gangster. And Jesus set me free. Yes. Turn, okay? Come on to the bright side and follow Jesus. Okay, friend? Okay? I love you too. Yeah, like, good to see you, bro. Yeah. Praise the living God. You guys, you've got to turn at the reproof of the word of God. You've got to come out from this darkness, this deadness. There's no power here. There's death here. And you know it. Turn at the living God. Turn unto him that can save you. Turn and cry out to him. Right now you're on the wide path leading to destruction. My friends, turn. Turn from sin. Turn from darkness, repent and believe the gospel, or that your sins will be blotted out. You need that new conscience of God. You need to be renewed in the spirit. You need to be sanctified by the word of God, because right now you're not. You're sanctified by this ungodly, unclean cup of devils. The drugs have not set you free. Nothing's setting you free, and Jesus can. But if you do not turn, my friends, you're going to burn in a lake of fire. Fire in, in, that is never quenched. Jesus said it. 42 times Jesus warned of hell. Outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And where the worm dieth not, my friends, repent and believe the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. But you can't believe like a demon. You can't just say, I believe, but not have works. Your works will follow you. Right now, your works are ungodly. Your works are still slave of this. Follow Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise, praise the Lord. Repent. It. Yeah, he's coming soon, right? Yep. Be a light unto all men. Let, let people know Jesus is coming to judge this world in righteousness. Judgment's knocking at the door. The end of the age is closing. We can see the strong delusion upon the land. It is here. And you have just a little bit of time, if your conscience is not completely seared, to turn and cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, help me overcome this, this wickedness I'm, I'm stuck in. Help me. I can't come out of it. There's, I have no power yet, you see. But if you're truly born again, the Bible says no temptation is given under heaven, which God has not made a way of an escape. Right now, you've not chosen to escape. You're, that's why you can't get out of your sin, because you haven't cried out to the Lord. He hasn't put his spirit in you. And if you are not born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. You're dead men walking. You think you're okay because you go to church, but you're still walking in darkness. There's no power there, and there's a judgment coming. You have to follow Jesus in spirit and truth. Your works will follow you. Some to everlasting life, some to everlasting shame and contempt. The, the short, sharp sword is coming to smite this world, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And those who are with Jesus are those who are called, chosen, and faithful. Revelation 17, 14. Have you been called? Have you been chosen? Have you proven that you're faithful to Jesus? Repent and believe the gospel.